the, the gentleman from okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Good to see Tom you. Perez, we appreciate all your hard work. Uh, you sent me uh, this uh, uh, process and procedure for uh, beginning the regulatory uh, process to get the law in motion. As we all know, the law can't become effective until the regulations are created for, for it to guide uh, all that are involved. Could you go through that? for me uh, what you sent me. Um, we wanted you to talk about the, uh, finally, the, the, the challenges of Title II and Title III, uh, how the governments would be involved in two, and how public accommodations would be involved in three. You know, what, what you're saying is that there's so many seniors that are warehoused in uh, institutions at the state and local level, right? So there, there is a uh, continuing problem of uh, old people and the wrong people <laughs> being institutionalized, and we're trying to get at it through Title II. Well, some of us are thinking about approaching Chairman Nadler about a hearing on this area uh, of the uh, disability laws because uh, we need to shine a spotlight on it, and maybe we maybe we will will do that. Um, I understand the need to seek additional input, uh, but can you make sure that the uh, basic legal principle that uh, Title II and III require accessible, accessible technology uh, like uh, websites is issued maybe even sooner than most of the, the regs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I think we'll be able to get one more question in before we have to recess for votes. I'll now recognize the gentleman from uh, North Carolina. Good morning. The committee will come to order. Today's hearing is on ensuring justice for victims of the Gulf Coast oil disaster. And we're very pleased to have with us Ken Feinberg, who is no stranger uh, to the Hill or to the government. We're very delighted that he has eagerly agreed to join us today in this discussion in terms of some of the many challenges that are before us. The uh, British Petroleum Claims Process has been plagued by problems up till now. Uh, mostly concerning the inadequate compensation and the lack of the remedies being uh, uh, brought forth in a timely fashion. Uh, there are troubling issues about the details of the escrow account and the independent claims facility. Uh, British Petroleum has repeatedly stated their promise to pay all legitimate claims and to ignore statutory caps of $75 million 
which this committee has already taken steps uh, to remove. The process has not only been not transparent, but it, is, it does not seem to be fair or accessible or fast. For example, British Petroleum was slow to accommodate the large population of Vietnamese American fishermen in the Gulf Coast states who have lost their livelihood because of the spill. In addition, they faced language barriers as the forms uh, were posted only in English and translators were scarce. Minority Gulf Coast workers uh, have been, uh, and they've testified before this committee, uh, have been virtually ignored in a, a process of making them whole. And so, uh, Attorney Ken Feinberg, with his long and distinguished record in government and in the private sector, has been mutually agreed by the parties uh, to help adjudicate this process. We welcome you, we're glad that you're here, and I would like now to yield to the distinguished ranking member of this committee, uh, Mr. Smith of Texas. Gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Conyers. Thank you, sir. Um, I think our discussion so far this morning uh, brings us to this issue. Uh, can and should we get more information uh, in the process of reauthorizing FISA? And uh, with the exception of the former Attorney General of California on the committee, I think everybody that I've heard thinks that there is nothing wrong with getting a little bit more information so that we know what's happening. Would you say that's, uh, that's a fair s opinion to hold at this point, Mr. Weinstein? Be very well, we didn't say that. I don't want to do that either. So I agree with you. We don't, we don't want to throw out sensitive information. That's why I said this is a, a somewhat tricky, uh, sensitive kind of a discussion we're having. Uh, but I, I, let, let's agree that we don't want to do that. And I, I would never uh, rationalize doing it. What, what do you think, Mr. Rottenberg? You know, after all, uh, we want to improve the laws. I, I, I know uh, you were very generous in your compliments about the Congress acting on this originally, but for goodness sake, uh, just to okay it again uh, because it's, we did it before, uh, couldn't we improve it a little bit? What about minimization, uh, uh, Mr. Jaffer? It, it doesn't that require a little more Carefulness, Hi. Professor Rottenberg. Uh, let me close with this observation. Uh, we we've, we've been told that we can't even uh, tell how many people are are being uh, subjected to this process located in the United States, and that. Uh, we don't know, and they can't tell us. And I, I think, I think we could get a little bit closer. There, there could be some reasonableness there to give. It. You know, it's it's this kind of vagueness that creates in those of us in the Congress uh, suspicions that are negative rather than suspicions that are positive. Uh, we don't know, and we can't be told. Uh, basic information like this. This uh, is the good. gentleman's time has expired. Do you mind if he responds? Uh, the witness uh, chair now recognizes the ranking member of the full committee, the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Conyers.
Thank you, Chairman Sensenbrenner. Uh, this is a sensitive discussion, as we all know, uh, but the Fourth Amendment is uh, critical, and I don't think that the Supreme Court, the courts have not finally ruled on what's going on. And I come to uh, this hearing uh, disturbed by how little we know and how much more we need to know. And uh, I'm glad that we're going to have uh, closed door hearings in the near future. Uh, and I, I hope that they will be productive in terms of, uh, of uh, settling some of the uh, lack of information that we have about this subject. And so I guess it's going to be uh, legitimate for us to ask uh, how much do we need to know, how much can we talk about publicly, and uh, how do we uh, make sure that, uh, quite frankly, FISA is not out of control. At this point, we don't have any way of knowing that. And uh, one of the problems is the so-called uh, minimization strategy. And so I uh, think we need to strengthen minimization and to make sure that this is a, a very understandable uh, FISA operation that is satisfactorily constitutional. And, and right now, uh, we, we aren't able uh, to do that. So I'm hoping that in addition, and I hope the chair will uh, uh, support or even lead in this, uh, we need to talk to FISA officials. This whole idea of us holding a hearing about FISA and uh, <laughs> nobody from FISA is here, uh, uh, it's, it's part of the problem. We want to talk uh, to the director, uh, publicly or privately. And uh, I haven't had that opportunity yet, and I hope that the members of the committee uh, share in my uh, desire uh, to do that. And so I'll uh, put the rest of my statement into the record. Without objection. But I, I, would, I would hope that, that uh, my dear friend Bobby Scott will not support Ben Franklin's uh, motto, uh, take it too seriously, because uh, we, we'll end up in a, in a worse situation than we are now. <laughs> I yield back the balance of my time.